what I'm trying to do here is indicate in on the center of this boss here. But I'm having trouble. If I move you around, you'll see the handle where, where the handle should be on this side of the mill. Uh, now there's a big hand wheel that goes on here and inside there's a resettable micrometer dial and that resettable dial is just drifting and I can't lock it which means as I try and turn this the dial just kind of spins loosely and I've got no way of knowing how far I've moved. So I decided to take off the front dial as well and I've got them over on the workbench. Now this is what the the resettable dial should look like. There's a nut here with a screw thread on the inside which screws on to an internal arbor and then the dial is on here. So this, when this all goes together you can screw it like that and then the when this is screwed in everything's free to rotate and when you push it outwards like this it pushes onto the back of the handle and then locks the rotation of the dial with the rotation of the handle. So far, so good. This, however, is the one that I'm having problems with. And as you can see, the dial rotates, and that spacer ring rotates, and this, this hand wheel rotates. But I can't unscrew this knurled wheel off of the internal arbor here. And I'm really not entirely sure what to do. I managed to get it off. Uh, I used the same arbor I actually used for my Stuart 10V. The bore on this is exactly uh, 5 eighths, it seems. Uh, so I used a bit of Loctite and I was able to uh, get the ring unstuck. So uh, here are all the bits. Let's get it back on the mill. In terms of process, that worked great. Uh, actually, what happened is the outside of this isn't perfectly vertical. So because of the draft and the casting, um, I was off center anyway, even though I was exactly the right distance away from the sides, that that didn't put me exactly in the center. So I, I just nudged it a little by eye. And here we go. So now I'm gonna drill this. One thing I've noticed recently is that I'm getting um, some weird oscillation on my center drills and I didn't know if that's because of the drills themselves or the uh, drill chuck so I got some spotting drills this is a three mil spotting drill from Tracy Tools right that might look a little Heath Robinson um, we've got a parallel we've got a piece of tool steel and we've got a strip of brass needless to say I will be taking advantage of these uh, my hope is though that yeah there is a little bit of resistance there. So let's see what happens. That seemed to work pretty well. So I'm gonna drill that now, 7BA clear. Okay. While I'm here, I may as well countersink it. One of the things I cleanly forgot to do was to thin out this little boss here to an eighth of an inch. It's currently about 200 thou, so it's just about 40 thou to come off. And I'm going to do that with a file on the workbench. One thing about the MIFID that I'm not a massive fan of is the total loss oiling system. So uh, if you leave these engaged like this, uh, it will slowly drip oil down and just fill the chip tray with oil. And I've done that multiple times. So what I've, what I've been resorting to doing is dosing it with small amounts of oil, maybe uh, an eighth of an inch or a quarter of an inch at the bottom of each of these. Because then if I leave them on accidentally, then I don't end up wasting all of this oil and have it all over here.
just drilling the grub screw to hold the strap onto the sheave. It's now time to machine the eccentric sheave. You can see this offset from center here. It's exactly 138 thou. So in order to achieve that, I can turn the outside diameter in the three jaw, and then I can put a piece of stock in uh, up against this side and chuck it back up again, and I'll be offset by exactly the, the thickness of that stock. So here's what I'm gonna turn into the sheave. And here is me machining some aluminium to act as the offset. And I thought it's a perfect opportunity to try out the horizontal miller again. This is the uh, packing material used to offset this piece of 5 8 steel. And you can see that I've used that to turn a uh, little boss here. And then I've just center drilled that, drilled it through um, sequentially up to 17 64 then bored it down at 9 30 seconds to fit the axle. I don't know how successful it will be, but I'm going to try and use my arbor to clean up this face. It's like I showed you before, it's really rough. Um, I'll let this set up and uh, we'll see how we go. I'll tell you what, I'm getting a little bit fed up with these tiny parts. Here's the slide valve and the slide valve nut that fits in there, just like that. With the completion of the eccentric rod, strap and sheave fixed now onto the, uh, onto the axle, we've now got the basis of a valve gear. It requires a little bit of fettling because there's a few sticky points. Over here we have the steam chest. So this is the steam chest cover. And inside you can see the slide valve going over there. And so with that, all of the machining on this engine is now complete.